Hello? Hello? Ah, now I can hear you, because <laughs> someone... Someone forgot to push a button, I think. I know, I don't know how you always forget that. I mean... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. How many years have we been doing this? Mm -hmm. For God's sakes. Hello, Tara, how are you guys tonight? You got back okay? Yes, we got back okay. Our flight back was... Horrible. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't nearly as bad as the flight out. I didn't get body checked by the flight attendant. So that you were going to kill the guy sitting in front of you. The guy sitting in front of me did decide to recline all the way into my lap and then repeatedly stand up and forcefully throw himself back into the chair to try and force it to go back further. And what level-headed thing did you do? I got up a couple times to go to the bathroom and made sure I lean on his chair real hard. Because <laughs> I'm passive-aggressive. And then we got home, and we had kitties just running all over the house, because they were like, oh my god, oh my god, you were gone, and we thought we were going to die. Oh my god, we have to run around and be very, very excited. And Peggy and... I'm Peggy and Simba are BFFs now. Oh, okay, good. Simba thinks Peggy's, like, the coolest shit in the whole world, and he wants to do everything she does. Including jump on the kitchen counters. He's picked up some of her less good habits, but he just, like... He thinks Peggy's the coolest shit ever. You see this asshole back there? I mean, dude, he's a cat. <laughs> Nash is building a new amp, and he put a quilt over it to keep Grady from messing with it. So what did Grady do? Climbed inside of it? Close. He's sleeping on top of it. Oh, well. Yeah. He has a bed. I paid money. That's, for a bed. I mean, he's a cat. You know how many beds I have bought that don't get used because Sephora box? <laughs> Peggy, look at the camera. No. Oh, hi. Hi, Internet. Go away. Cats do what they fucking want. How about Dottie? Dottie still hates him. And she spends part of every day in the basement pouting like a little goth teenager and then eventually she gets tired of pouting and she comes up and pokes around she's coming around very very slowly see when when, when we go away and come back greedy will, cut, will walk around making this very sad little <laughs> noise because he almost died <laughs> Dottie doesn't give a fuck if we come or go Peggy and Simba, whenever Dan or I come home, are very excited and come running to the door like like puppies. Dottie could give a fuck. Like, as long as she has food and the litter box is scooped, I can go to hell. And Dan, Dan she loves, but only on her terms. Like, when I want you to pet me, I will fucking let you know. It's the way God intended. All right, let's let's get it started here tonight. Oh, good, you're going to snore through the bit again? Mm -hmm. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the World Wide Interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back to your football segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this week, of course, we are approaching Christmas. We have an update! On the goat? I don't have a graphic. But YouTube says it is the A should rhyme with save, so it's Yevla. Yevla. Gave Lego. Gave, well, gave la. Da -da 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 -da. we have an update <laughs> on the Gave Lego this week. Um, I like that it, it was really important, so you put on your glasses. Do -do 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 All right, where 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 are you? Looking you in the channel. All right, there we go. Um, I'm like super so, extra pale tonight. The uh, the Yevla goat. The main one is still standing, but the smaller, there is apparently, there are two goats. There are two goats involved. I didn't know there was a lesser goat. There is a greater and lesser goat, yes. The second goat, the backup goat, if you will, has been set ablaze. It is, it, it, it is surviving. However, it is, it is, it was set fire. 
Um, I'm not exactly sure if this counts because the main goat still stands unscathed. I, I, yeah, I didn't know there was like a backup goat. There, there is an emergency backup. <laughs> I cannot believe this. I'm not but lying. It, but it's smaller. Yes. There, there is a backup. Now, probably why this happened... Is one of Thor's goats smaller? No, it is not. Now, probably why this happened is because the uh, the other goat does not have a webcam on it 24-7. Um, but there, there was a dude who got close to it, and it was uh, afterwards, it was on fire, and he got arrested, but... Uh, so, yeah! But the backup coat is the backup standing, kind of. But it was damaged. Yes, just wounded. Yes, it was wounded, but it is intact. However, I'm still standing. Ba ba ba. <sighs> we have only because <laughs> it's it's a goat. I know. We have only seven days remaining to Christmas. R really? Yeah. Jesus fuck! I still have shopping to do. Yeah, next Monday is Christmas Eve. I don't think Dan's getting any presents. I can return everything. So. <gasps> That's not true. He's getting presents. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, next uh, next next Monday. So we, we will can do it. We'll find out next Monday if the goat Save can leave the goat can make it. However, there are there are forces in motion. We have seen there are forces in motion that are conspiring against a giant straw goat. Why the fucking... Anyway. So, uh... I'm a little hungry, all of a sudden. Um... Okay. For some reason, I, uh... I'm in the mood for, um... Pork chop sandwiches. Is that a thing? <laughs> Organizers of a Christmas event have apologized to outraged parents after a fire alarm reportedly prompted Santa Claus to burst out of his grotto, rip off his beard, and scream at the children, Get the fuck out! Oh shit, we're all gonna die! Get the fuck out, you stupid idiot! Fuck! In Santa's defense, he lives at the North Pole. He's not accustomed to fire. The incident occurred at an event in the English town of St. Eves. I think I'm saying that. St. Ives? St. Ives. St. Eves. St. Ives. I don't know. Um, when an alarm at a nearby but unconnected event caused an evacuation of a building. While parents and children were already evacuating, Santa Claus tore into the room and started causing a havoc. He came charging in, ripped his hat and beard off in front of 50-odd kids, and started shouting and swearing at people to leave. <laughs> I love how the fest now this is even better. Here is how the festival organizers uh um uh, phrased it. Here's how they framed it. Santa was upstairs in his grotto and immediately assisted in the evacuation of the building. That's some good spin. <laughs> that is some good spin. <laughs> the Get alarm went off at a family friendly rave? Yeah. Now, as I understand the definition of rave, ain't no way to make that shit family friendly. <laughs> no, because there's normal. Maybe, maybe the drugs involved were just pixie sticks. I don't know. Just smarties. Yeah, get them hyped up on the sugar. <laughs> and of course, the parents are like, "How dare you act that way in front of children?" And on the one hand, yes, you're playing Santa. You got to take that into account before you panic. On the other hand. If the fucking building's on fire... Oh, 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 children! I'm not concerned about whether you have to talk to your kid about Santa, Karen. Oh, 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 oh. We're all going to die! Oh, 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 get the fuck out! Oh, oh, Familiar oh, with fire oh. because he goes down chimneys? Your, your fireplace isn't supposed to be running if you want Santa to come down, you guys. I think he's... That's how you get coal. I think he can put that shit out. He's fucking Santa. He's fucking Don't magic. Don't him. Heck. Put the fire out. Clean the flu. Heck, have you seen Netflix? Santa's Snake Plissken now. 
I did, and I don't know the concept behind that movie show. I don't even know. Santa wants the flamethrower. Santa wants the what? Um, but yeah. So, Christmas Chronicles. Um, let's let's go with more fucking with the kids for this holiday season. There's a lot of that. That that seems to be a theme. Um, awesome. Parents disturbed by elf murder class assignment. What? Some parents. I don't of even know what that means. Some parents of students at a British elementary school are complaining after assignment that involved the quote murder of a Christmas elf. Parents say eight and nine-year-old students at Flowery Field Elementary School in Hyde, England, arrived for class to find a crime scene had been set up in a classroom, complete with the outline of the murder scene involving an <laughs> elf on the shelf. <laughs> um, so not okay. There was police no. tape, and a table had been knocked over, and there was blood smeared on one of the tables. The idea was an elf had been murdered by another elf. That's so not okay. Head teacher. I, mean, I think we should do away with elf on the shelf because yeah. it's weird, it's creepy, and it's just indoctrinating your children into a surveillance state at a young age. And I don't I don't know why we all signed on and agreed to that shit. You know what? You, what? Tara, Tara, you know who would say something like that? The murderer. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't do it in front of children. <laughs> uh, head teacher. And Ian... that's the thing, like, some kid is going to be like, no, I got no problem. Head teacher Ian Fell said the elf murder scene was part of a writing assignment. What, what, what was the theme? Why I need psychotherapy? There's ways to do something like this. Like, oh my god, someone stole Santa's cookies. Okay, yeah. I go or, with that. oh my god, somebody mixed up all the reindeer. Like, there's ways to do, like, a crime thing in the North Pole without fucking murdering an elf. You gotta lower the... deal with spilled blood. You gotta <laughs> lower the stakes a little bit right. for the nine-year-olds. Yeah. You can't oh my jump. God. Somebody stole all the elves' candy canes. You can't just jump straight to like a Law and Order bit, you know? Right. Like that's three I thought off off the top of my head. You could have done better than this. You didn't have to do CSI North Pole. <laughs> yeah. Jingle bells in the background instead of you know the Who. So that's that's not okay. That's just fuck me. This is fucking murdering the goddamn this kids. Like, how much do you hate children? Maybe you shouldn't be teaching. I I don't I don't hate children. It just no. I mean this teacher. I don't hate them. I don't hate kids. Well, it, depending on the wine selection, anyway. But um, let's see here. Here's an here's another one of those. Everyone sent us this. It's it's one of those. Saw this and thought of you, sort of things, which every time this happens. When you're us. I question my life things. choices, yeah. Well, for uh, when it's me, it means terrible things and also hippos. When there have been like three people this week that think I'm unaware of the I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas song. <laughs> and I'm like, I appreciate your enthusiasm. Oh, bless your heart. But yes, bless your heart. I'm, I'm aware. Oh, oh, oh. I, that's. That's older than all of us here. Yeah. I think that's, that's about as old as you and me combined. No, it's not 80, but it's still pretty old. Well, like, they're trying to be nice. Yeah. But I'm like, yeah, I know. Well, this one. Uh, here's why a Vermont man put up a giant illuminated middle finger yes. sculpture on his front lawn. I think I referred to this as your bat signal. <laughs> For drivers traveling on northwestern Vermont Route 128 through Westford, it'd be hard not to notice a rather outsized, impolite gesture. 
But don't worry, Ted Peckley says the 700 pound wooden middle finger sculpture on his front lawn isn't for them. Brother Pelkey says the sculpture, which sits on top of a 16 foot pole, is the product of an uphill battle more than 10 years in the making with local town officials over a garage he wants to build on his property. <clears throat> Quote, I'm not trying to cause hate and animosity to the town, uh, to the people who live in that town, because they're very good people in that town, the 54-year-old Westbrook native said of his fellow residents in the 2,000-person town. All the people are very good people, with the exception, Pelkey says, of the Westford Select Board uh, and other town leaders who have blocked his efforts to get a permit to build the 8,000-square-foot garage so he could move his truck repair and monofilament recycling business in nearby Swanton to his own property. They should say Pelkey's applications have fallen short of the town's standards, but he thinks they're biased against him. I wonder why they're but If this is the kind of resp- Okay, look. I respect the shit out of this. Nobody jumps immediately to, okay, you're going to turn down my, uh, my application. Here's a 700 pound middle finger. I that, get that has craftsmanship. <laughs> he spent money. He had to run fucking electrical line. He is serious. Also, I, I would like to point out that Dan will 100% be the kind of old man that will do this. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. This is, this is, no, this is an unnecessary escalation, I feel. I feel. I mean, how many times did they deny him? It doesn't say, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to bring the, uh, the, the question up, but it, it cost him $4,000. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's fucking serious. But no, I feel he says it's an ongoing dispute. So I feel like he got turned down more than once. Yeah, but I don't think anyone flipped him off when they were turning him down. Maybe not literally. This Have you is... ever been to like a town board meeting? No. That shit is petty. Jesus Christ! Like, Parks Look... and Rec did not get it far off. Look at this thing. <laughs> Fucking it's glorious. So what I actually is... originally thought it was painted gold. No, it's wood. It's wooden. In which case, I fully expect some kid to go up there and paint all the infinity stones on it. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, I only hate half this town. I, it's... <laughs> I mean, it has fingernails. Okay. There's craftsmanship there. But here's the thing. This is not going to increase the chances... That his permit's going to be applied. No, but it's satisfying. Like I said, 100% the dude that will do this someday. Oh, yeah. <coughs> so, <coughs> you know what? If I'm going to throw $4,000 into something, and God knows how much of my own time, what, fuck's sake, he could have just bribed them. But that's not... Fun. And then they win. That's how bullies win. Yeah. I know you're not gonna I you're not getting the garage, dude. You're not I think he's accepted that someone said this is just you've been going on for a decade. So I feel like he's maybe accepted that he's not getting garage, and this is the result. Never leave a man with nothing left to lose. I mean my grandfather would have totally done this, and I learned from him. Uh, Old man Dan will definitely do something like this. Yeah. We it's will a, never be able to live in, like, a planned If you're community. still doing this show in, like, 20 years, <laughs> oh, I will be on If we're show. still doing this show when we're 60... <laughs> oh, so, nah. It'll be titled, Get Off My Fucking Lawn! <laughs> Hang on, I gotta take my pill. <laughs> So you don't have to do it at like eight o'clock at night because you can't stay up that late. I had I got hot bang. Let's, what what fucking accent are we go, are you going to have? Old? That's that's not. It's, it's like all of a sudden you you were from Maine there for a minute. 
I don't know. Every now and then, when I when I when I feel like I'm nagging Dan, I turn into like an old lady from the Bronx, and I'm like, Morty, Morty, take your pill, Morty. Did you remember to take your pill? Anyway, let's let's move a little bit further south than that. Oh, Florida. Oh, McDonald's. Up Florida. McDonald's drive-through customer tries paying with pots. Caught. Cops not loving it. <laughs> Port St. Lucie, a McDonald's worker apparently wasn't loving it when a drive through customer reportedly tried to trade marijuana for food. Look at that mugshot. That is some hair. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's It's all going one direction. Like, oh, it's they, like there's a wind machine. Yeah, like, do they have a very dramatic that? fan where they do the mugshots? It's like he tried to do the flock of seagulls only backwards. Did they make him like did they make him were they hanging him on his side when they did the mugshots? Case happened at about 2 a.m. Sunday. Uh police were called to the McDonald's at the 3100 block of Southwest Southwest Port St. Lucie Boulevard. Quote, the McDonald's workers told police that a man on the, the in a Pontiac four-door drove through the drive-thru of the McDonald's trying to exchange a baggie of marijuana for food. The McDonald's worker refused, and the car drove off. Um. Buddy. I mean, last week we had that transaction in reverse. <laughs> so apparently his mistake was not taking that shit to Sonic. I, it's, it's just, I, how much was that marijuana worth versus how much was the food worth? Right? Like, unless you were ordering a lot of food, you were not getting any kind of deal. No. It's, and, and here's the other thing. Every, the shit's about to be legal. Come on. Everywhere. It's about, hold on to that. The resale value is much higher. Just give it a, It's worth more than a fucking McDouble anyway. Yeah, just just give it a few weeks. I don't care how bad your munchies are. I was fucking We don't work on the barter system. We no, don't. We don't. People will try though. Like my years in retail, people have been like, what if I give you a coupon to my store? Well then you give me a discount. No. No. No, That's... I fucking won't, because I'm a cog in a corporate machine. No, oh, yeah, I mean, it's like, it's there's nothing in the employee manual that says, okay, don't trade things unless... Right. It's like, we only take fucking money. Now, what we did used to do when I worked at Starbucks, there was, uh, do you have Moe's in your area? It's like, Southwest. Barito's. There was a Moe's in the shopping center. Yeah. And they, they would give us their employee discount, and we would give them our employee discount. We just had a little exchange program going. But that was money! Right. Not... It wasn't like you came in with a burrito and were like, give me coffee. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's not like, hit our drugs. May I have food? You know, scratching each other's backs. Yeah. Now, yeah, and, and, and it's like, he missed a step here. It's like, if you go sell the drugs... Right. But then, then you wouldn't have drugs. <laughs> but if you give the drugs to the McDonald's guy, you're not going to have drugs anyway. Yeah, that's true. Sell the drugs you were going to give the McDonald's guy, then you will have money, and you guess what? You could buy a whole lot more McDonald's with the Although, money. Although, to be fair, and I, I'm a person who kind of likes McDonald's. It's kind of a guilty pleasure. Keep the marijuana. <laughs> Just keep the fucking weed, man. In the long run, it's going to make you happier. Uh, you say guilty pleasure, it's like, that, that's like a guilty, that's like a, a benign cyst is a guilty pleasure. I mean, that, ugh. I like it. Ugh. They have good fries. I miss the deep fried apple pies. Money can be traded for goods and services. That's how you get things, not... Although, Not, if, you, if you want the deep-fried apple pies, uh, I don't know what they call it up there. We call it checkers down here. They sell them, like McDonald's really? used to make. Yes, they do. There's, like, a checkers... There's, like, one checkers per state up here. 
They sell. But they put like pepper on the French fries, and that pisses me off. But they do sell the fr- the fried apple pies. I'll keep that in mind, because I don't go there because they put black pepper on the French fries, and it pisses me off. Taco Bell has deep fried apple empanadas, and those are pretty good. Ah, <sighs> well, let's let's move on to okay. So, one of the the problems with being a criminal is when you are a criminal and someone commits a crime against you. What are you going to do? You you have little recourse. We've covered that, though. Like, uh-huh. didn't somebody call the cops over stolen cocaine? This um, guy. No, they did. People are ridiculous. This guy had a plan. It's just it was a bad one. Um, authorities, man fabricated story about child in stolen vehicle. Drug deal gone bad apparently led to a false Amber Alert being issued Saturday. The alert was issued after an automobile had been reported stolen from a gas station. A 13-month-old child was alleged to have been in the back seat. But the story began to unravel once police questioned Michael Dutz, who reported the stolen vehicle. Mitchell, sorry. Who reported the stolen vehicle, according to a news release. About 5 p.m. Saturday, Dutz notified the Fulton County Sheriff's Department about the stolen car. Dutz told police the three suspects absconded with the car while he paid for food, I mean, for fuel. The Amber Alert was issued, the man post was established, and an investigation commenced. Upon police questioning, it was determined Dutz's story was a hoax. Dutz was robbed during a drug deal and used the infant as a way to pursue charges against the perpetrators. No car was stolen and no child was abducted. Um, so, Illinois State Police took Dust Dutz into custody. Uh, he's being charged with residential burglary, filing a false police report, false representation of police statements, false 911 call, and various other offenses. So here, you thought... They gotta figure that out. What? They gotta figure that out. You make up an imaginary kid? Yeah. They gotta figure that out. Yeah, it's like, aha, you steal my drugs, I'll tell the cops you stole a kid, they'll arrest you. Okay, first off, um, a kid. Was it your kid? Right. You just invented an offspring? At some point, someone is going to be expected to produce a kid. Yeah, because <laughs> if they get this car and they find these people and they're like, where's the kid? And there is no kid. They're not going to be like, well, I guess there's no kid, but hey, they have drugs. We'll arrest them anyway. No. Um, do they, do they have Amber alert in other countries? I know. I don't know. Um, if you're not in the U S an Amber, Amber alert, uh, was named after, I believe it was named after an abducted child. It's a kind of a big deal. It's a law that went into effect when an Amber alert is issued, everyone's phone goes off. Yep. There's a there's a warning. They even put like the road construction signs will will spell out the Amber Alert. It's a big deal. When I worked in the mall, like stores would have to close the doors so that if the kid is in the store, you can stop movement of people and find them. Like it's a thing. We don't fuck around. So you're instead of getting the getting even with the people who stole your drugs. You're going to jail now. Together. Yeah. And they know what you did. Even though you tried to be all sneaky and shit and not get in trouble yourself, you still, as the President of the United States said, you ratted them out. Okay, that's right. I'm thinking of a code Adam in malls. Malls is Adam, yeah. Amber alerts like the public Yeah, that's the big one where... Shopping centers and places of business, it is. It's a code atom. Yeah. And our president has entered, uh, apparently it's okay to to call someone a rat for assisting law enforcement. That's A-OK, according to our president. That's how that's how the law works now. What's not okay is assisting law enforcement. Yeah, that's that's not cool law anymore. Law president! That's, that's not cool anymore. <sighs> Finally, Jesus Christ, this guy, 
You know, it, it's often said we create our own hell. <clears throat> and this dude did exactly that. Holy shit. Cruise rescue man stuck in grease vent of empty Ch uh, California restaurant. What? Oh, Jesus oh, fuck. God. San Lorenzo, California. A man who authorities say was possibly trying to burglarize an abandoned Chinese restaurant has been rescued from the grease vent where officials say he had been trapped for two days. Oh my God. You're never not going to smell like that again. Your, your your testicles will smell like dumplings for the rest of your life. There's no amount of showering. No. no they won't smell like dumplings. They'll smell like... Old grease. Ass. Yeah. Ass dumplings. Old ass used dumplings. grease. Oh, Jesus. Fuck. You're going to have grease in places you can't, couldn't imagine. That smell is in your soul <laughs> Damn. Alameda County Sheriff's officers say deputies and firefighters were called to the vacant build building in San Lorenzo on Wednesday after someone heard cries for help. Office said that the officials arrived. They found the grease-covered man stuck inside the metal vent. Uh, Sergeant Ray Kelly tells the San Francisco Chronicle the man was in generally good condition despite being, despite being exposed to the elements. Kelly say the unident unidentified man was taken to a hospital. Deputies will decide later whether to book him into jail or issue a citation. How bad are the elements in San Francisco? Well, if you sit there, well, it's okay. That's true. That's true. I mean, what? You have... I was just in San Diego for a week, and like the worst it got was it got a little chilly at night. Well, here's the other thing. He was in a metal vent in sunny California. Yeah, that probably for sucks. two days in Greece. In Greece. I mean, he is well moisturized. That's the yeah. good news. I, I the just, bad news is everything else. Everything. Else. So here's this guy who's walking along and thinking, "Hey, I could steal shit from in there." That's a grease vent. It's grease. I'll just slide right in. You it's won't not slide right out though. It's not Vaseline. Mm -mm. Have you seen old grease? That shit gets like chunks in it. I have. It's fucking horrifying. It's it's well, it's either plant or animal matter at that point, and it's there would be nothing in that restaurant that would be worth doing that. Like I don't care if they have the crown jewels, Marcellus Wallace's soul. I don't. I don't fucking care. Getting, getting caught in Greece for two days. Isn't this like how a supervillain gets created? Yeah, I think so. You know, you got like Hydro Man, who's part water, and you have the Sand Man, who's like made of flood. You come out of there, you're all used grease. That you could, your body has the consistency of used grease. It's not a very good power. No, you are the worst X Man. You are. <laughs> you're that senator who turned into water. <laughs> <laughs> Except also disgusting. <laughs> You're that senator who turned into water, except also you smell. I just did. So, good job. The, he did this to himself. Yeah, you made that choice. They don't go in the hole. There is nothing in that abandoned restaurant that could have possibly... Is Chris Evans worth it? No. 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 Dude, because... I just... Because I, even if Chris oh. Evans is the other side, I'm a meet Chris Evans covered in old grease. Oh, and I want to point out even better. He took off some of his clothes to do this. Ugh. He took off his shirt and his pants so he could slide in easier. It didn't work. That's what she said. I spent time in the military inhaling tear gas. I'd rather do that than that. Yeah. I'd rather, like, spend a lot of time sucking up CS again. Okay, would you that. rather inhale tear gas or spend two days in an old oh. grease trap? The tear gas. It's the best to go to. This season of Jackass got dark. <laughs> 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 oh. oh, 
so I guess, all right, the first thing we learned tonight is, um, don't stuff yourself into strange smelly holes. It's not worth it. I mean, I don't think... <laughs> that could really fuck up someone's dating life. I'm just <laughs> Um, specific about that shit. We've learned if you're a criminal and someone does crime to you during your crimes, just, you just got to deal with it. That, you just got to roll with it. It's all in the game. It's all in the game. That's you know, you don't try to get out with this shit. Mm -mm. You gotta let it either take care of it yourself. Certainly don't invent an imaginary child. No. No. Because at some point, somebody's going to be expected to produce that child. We've learned that marijuana is not money. You, no. there is a There is an intermediate step in the They're process. They're both green. They are both green. Well, depends. You know. Well, in America, all the money is green. Is marijuana not always green? Depends on how dried out it is. Oh. Well, it starts out green. <laughs> But yeah, there are you, you. You can't just cut out the middleman on that one. As Unless you go money. to Sonic, take that shit to Sonic. We've learned that in America, you can be a as petty as you fucking want to be. Goddamn right. <laughs> that is our god-given right in this fucking country. I love that it wasn't legal for him to build a garage, but it is legal for him to erect that. Loopholes, everybody. I think that's fair. Not hurting anybody. We've learned that when you're dealing with eight and nine-year-olds, maybe you want to de-escalate the fiction just a wee bit. Just, just a touch. Especially when you're dealing with Santa. Yeah. Th that's some delicate shit with children not not the fake blood that probably don't invoke i like that both for in england this week we had a story where people were aghast that santa took off his beard and cursed but then people in england also thought it was okay to murder his elves and make children solve the crime yes y'all need to work out where you are on santa it's the last thing we learned this week um Santa fears the fire. Santa, fire bad. I mean, he's not wrong. Get the fuck out! We're all dead! Fuck! You stupid idiot! I don't care if you want a truck, Tommy! Well, maybe if it's a fire truck. Problem solved. Yeah. 